So honestly, when uh, Avi asked me to speak, I was like, why would you want me to speak on Aerospike? I mean, I barely know anything about it. I'm dipping my you know, heads down trying to deal with my growth. I'm the last person you want to talk, you want talking about Aerospike. I install it, it just works. He goes, can you just get on stage and say that? <laughs> so this is for him. I'm on stage <laughs> and I'm saying that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so this shows you the different buckets in which we use Aerospike and uh, all the ones with M are where Aerospike is used. I will go through each of these use cases as I go further down this deck. So why Aerospike and why not something else? You know, I don't like to beat up on competitors. It's not my style, but you want something that scales linearly, that has figured out how to do cross data center replication, right? Has consistent performance. That is very key to me. I come from another key value store, which is really awesome, but requires three people in operations to constantly care and feed it, right? It's an amazing product, but it just requires a lot of love, right? Aerospike doesn't. Good or bad, I don't know. Probably if it required a lot of love, he would make more money from support. I don't know. And there is, like I said, the and we use the TTL feature quite a bit, so happy with that. It's hassle-free. Now diving into some of the key services that run on Aerospike. Uh, one of the key ones for us is what I call the durable mailbox, right? We are an app-only company. We don't have a website. We don't have anything. All we have is an app on your mobile phone. So for us, how do we engage with the user? How do we interact with them? It all happens through what we call a durable mailbox. Whenever backend processing has run through the 40, 50 million users and come up with things we want to engage individual users on, those messages get put in Aerospike. As the user comes in, whenever he decides to wake up the application, Durable mailbox would say, ah, I have to push this message out to you in a subtle way. So it'll push maybe an offer, maybe it'll just be a little bell thing ringing saying, hey, you have a message that you need to do this or that. It's an integral part of our API. It's very mobile friendly. If we use both the features of it, whether it's callback or polling, an app, if running, will constantly poll and say, hey, do you have anything for me? Do you have anything for me? In a one, once a minute basis. I've tried to be consistent and put uh, QPSs on this. As you will see, it's nowhere near the scale of uh, PayPal or any of the other guys. We are very small, you know, yay big right now. So we're at about 50 to 100,000 QPS on this cluster. And the key point is that our 99% latency is at one millisecond. That to me is the key. And that has been the case regardless of the size, okay? When we were less than a mill, 100,000 users, today close to 30, 40 million users. Authorization, that's one of our, probably the most hardest hit Aerospike service we have in the organization today. So when you first come in into our infrastructure, the first thing you do is you talk to this service, which defines which of our APIs you're allowed to use what roles within those APIs you're allowed to have. It also distinguishes between static and dynamic tokens. So we are a payment solution, which means that our thin SDK is embedded in other partner SDKs. So you could be in another, uh, another mobile solution and he's using phone pay as a payment and it will come over here. Those tokens cannot expire. Right, those are static tokens that have to exist, otherwise they will get a million phone calls saying, what the hell, you just logged me out of my application. All of that is handled by this particular Aerospike instance. Today it's like, uh, I think, eight bare metals. The QPS on this is 100 to 200,000. 
per second. And I think the latency is also, it's under less than one millisecond. In-app engagement, the in-app engagement, I already, I think, spoke to some of it, but we support localization in different languages. Clearly, we're not going to release a new app every time one of the localization line changes. So we take the entire localization pack per language, shove it in Aerospike, and then serve it out as and when the clients come in. That seems to work for us. Don't know if it's right or wrong. Offers and deals, we very much, all three co-founders come from a data background. Big, big believers in looking at data, analyzing data. Our Hadoop cluster is already at uh, half a petabyte, and we do a lot of every single thing you do on your phone is scrubbed and kept in there for post-mortem and analysis. So we, we know exactly where you're traveling, what you're doing, when to push you, if there's a particular app, we've integrated with a company called Swiggy that does delivery of food, and we can send you the right kind of coupons as you engage between 8 and 10 p.m., which is when most people eat in India, unlike over here. I go to people's house, they give me dinner at 10.30. I'm like, dude, I wanna go to sleep. That's our main bread and butter. Obviously, you've heard that ad infinitum today from other people on fraud and risk. Clearly, for us also, it's the same thing. Fraud and risk is key for us, especially as we're growing. It's a new platform. It's mobile only. It directly integrates with your bank. The government mandates are you should have two-factor authorization at all times, right? So the combination of your phone and your Chip gives you one layer of authorization, then you need to type in a password every single time, which gives you the second layer of authorization, but yet fraud is rampant. On average, we have about a million dollars worth of fraud every month. We catch it, we fix it, we patch it, but people are very entrepreneurial. Some of the fraud isn't even fraud, it's just, I call it India happened. <laughs> so we came up with an offer that says, all right, you know, if you're first come, when you first come in, you'll get a dollar cash back, right? In 75 rupees, which equates to one dollar. 24 hours later, we find out that this one bank account has received 400 of these offers. And we're like, how the hell is that possible? We have velocity checks. We check for the combination of your phone, IMEI, and your chip. There's the guy sitting in a third tier city somewhere, and he swapped the chip out of his phone 400 times so he could get this $1 every time. Hats off to him. <laughs> I said, keep the money, man. You deserve it more than me. That's the kind of fraud we are dealing with. And then we write checks for it and we make that possible, but you know. And uh, so average latency on this is around three milliseconds and on average we do about five lookups. So we get our fraud code between 15 to 20 milliseconds out of Aerospike. We've tried other services for this particular one, nothing even comes close. As you can see, we do about 30 million writes a day, 40 to 45 million reads per day. The QPS isn't that much, it's around 12,000 because it's only involved in the user path when they are transacting as opposed to the other ones. Right or wrong? There are some things I do which I don't know whether I'm doing it right or wrong. Like I said, we chose Aerospike as our platform, we started using it, we continue to use it. We are a completely microservices-based organization. So from day one, we are Docker, Mesosphere is our core platform. Data syncs in the live user path are only three. There is Aerospike, there is MySQL, and there is HBase, depending on what profile and what latency you want on each of them. 
And I don't like running big, mondo, giant things. So every application gets their own piece of aerospike. Some of them are not big, they run on VMs. Some run on bare metals. So fraud has its own cluster. In-app localization has its own cluster. And I see, I, I hear people talk about a 100 node aerospike cluster. I'm sitting here going, am I doing this the right way? Am I doing it correctly? What I know is that this works for me. It goes with my philosophy of having microservices. I like the fact that the profile of the user is different. How he uses Aerospike is different. How I grow that cluster in comparison to another cluster is different. So that works for me. We can debate over drinks whether it's right or wrong. I would love to do that. I didn't even know that uh, you can put the Aerospike file system on your NVMe. I honestly did not know that. I don't do that. Just the vanilla out the box, put XFS on it, put Aerospike on it, works for me. Maybe in the future, I will, if I stop growing at the rate I'm growing, I can look at these things and try and get a little more juice out of things. But for now, it works. I'm not going to touch it. In some cases, we run Aerospike on KVM. Shoot me, but it works, no issues, right? My most favorite topic is governance, right? This entire revolution of key value stores, starting with Mongo and all those guys, have just completely taken away any kind of operational oversight. There is so much power given to the developer in terms of what he can do directly without interacting with ops that it causes problems at scale. I don't know how to fix it. I don't even know if I should fix it. Maybe education is one way of fixing it, right? As we are going to a 2DR thing, we are finding out how some people are using UDFs and how when we are moving data across, UDFs have a circular dependency and we have to re-import it three times before it will actually work, right? In my MySQL world, they can't do anything unless it goes through a review, right? I mean, they want to add a column, they want to add an index. We catch it before it happens. Over here, it just happens. Along with great power comes great responsibility. So let's see how responsible the developers will be. So far, it's not looking good. What are some of the challenges? Outside of this room, Aerospike is relatively unknown. Not many people know about it. It's hard to find any talent around it. The good news, you probably don't need the talent. They've built a product so good it just works, right? And my favorite is what business problem are you trying to solve? By giving the developer where he can create his own namespace, his own table sets. I have cases where a person has started using Aerospike and I see 100 gigs of data going there. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Turns out he's, it, it belongs in MySQL, but he knew how to do this, so he put it here, right? So those are some of the challenges that we are dealing with, right? Because we hire 30 developers every month. It's hard enough to know the names, forget what they are doing to the code. God help me, I mean. Right? Enterprise or community, we run a mixture of both. So happy to, I think the mantra is I should be all on enterprise. So someday, somewhere, I will try to abide by that. But for, sorry. That's all I have, guys. I hope you go enjoy your drinks. And uh, if you have any questions, <laughs> let me know.